Alrighty guys, what's going on? Linky here. And in today's video, we are finally coming back to talk more about Legends Arceus. And the reason I wanted to make this video today is because ever since the first trailer for Legends Arceus, we've known that there's going to be new Pokemon coming to the Sinnoh region in the form of the starters. All three of them are not native to Sinnoh and were brought here by a professor that we don't know about from other regions. Given the place Pokemon is in right now, and the fact that some of their new features, including Galarian forms and giving old Pokemon new evolutions, brings up the question, how many new kinds of Pokemon are we going to see in Legends Arceus? Are we going to see brand new, never before designs? Are we going to see Sinnohan forms? Or will we see Pokemon from other regions make Sinnoh their home in these games? Let's discuss that. It would be surprising to me if we got brand new Pokemon in Legends Arceus, just unless they wanted to completely retcon the old story, or if they were making the claim that the Legends series exists in a different timeline, then maybe we could see new Pokemon, but it, it wouldn't make any sense to me that we have Pokemon during the time of Legends Arceus that are there, that are living in the region, and that don't exist during modern day in Diamond and Pearl and Platinum when you can visit the region uh, it doesn't make any sense. Where did those Pokemon go? Uh, did they go extinct? Did they leave the region and go somewhere else? Were they eradicated? There's, there's a lot of questions there that would need to be answered. But the fact that new Pokemon from previous regions are being brought into Sinnoh brings up some interesting questions about the Pokedex. Mostly in the fact that in the original Diamond and Pearl games, the Pokedex was lacking a bit. There was a severe number, a severely low number of fire type Pokemon, for example, if you didn't pick the Chimchar line as your starter. There were not a ton of water type Pokemon out there that did not have dual typings that kind of interfered with your ability to build a team. You had Pokemon like Gastrodon, but he also had that secondary ground typing. So bringing in Pokemon from other regions gives the developers a chance to really open up this Pokedex and give players a ton of variety. I think you could bring a ton of Pokemon from the three specific regions that these starters are from. So we could see some Unova Pokemon in this game, we could see more Johto Pokemon, and we could see some uh, Alola Pokemon as well. That's where the three starters are from. You would presume that the professor has made plenty of trips to these three regions. So bringing some of those Pokemon with him to the Sinnoh region could spur a growth in population, could spur some of these Pokemon existing in the wild. Maybe the professor is trying to bring them and introduce them to the wild. There's so many things with that that we could really see on full display. Now we gotta pause this discussion just for a moment because I need you to take a look at this. Look at these numbers. A lot of you guys are watching these videos and hopefully, as I've mentioned before, enjoying them, but you're not subscribed to the channel, which means you might miss an upload where we're talking about Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl, where we're talking about Legends Arceus, we got some E3 coverage coming very soon, other videos as well. So if you guys are not subscribed and you want to keep watching this stuff, please be sure to hit that subscribe button because I would really appreciate it and it does a ton to support the channel. So the idea of the professor bringing Pokemon to this region or Game Freak going and retconning some things and introducing other Pokemon to the region that are native to other places, those are definitely two possibilities. The other possibility that I think we might see and it would fit a pattern that Game Freak has been doing over the last couple years is introducing regional variants. Now, for those of you who do not know, who are not aware, regional variants are Pokemon who are given brand new designs, brand new typings, brand new looks, and they live in other regions. So as an example, you have a Zigzagoon from the Hoenn region, and in the Galar region has a different typing, has a different design. It's a different species, a different version of the species. It's like two different bears or two different squirrels in real life for the most part. So what if Legends Arceus introduced different versions of Pokemon, Sinnohan Pokemon? Now we know, at least I think we're pretty sure, that we're not going to see Sinnohan Pokemon in Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl. I think the decks and the roster, whatever Pokemon that we are dealing with in these titles, it's going to be largely consistent with the old games. We might see an expansion of the Pokedex to include newer Pokemon or evolutions and forms and typings based on typings that we didn't already see in the original games, but I don't think we're going to see any new Pokemon or any new forms per se. But with Legends Arceus, I think the environment and the region in the world is primed to introduce some new Sinnohan forms. There's a ton of different Pokemon from other regions that you could see work in Sinnoh. There's a lot of ice type Pokemon and other types that could become native to the Sinnoh region in its colder climate. You could see some Alolan Pokemon in this vein who are more tropical come to the Sinnoh region and become more temperate 
because the, the environment and the ecology of these two regions could not be more different. You could see Pokemon from regions that have, that have come since Sinnoh be introduced back into the Sinnoh region. And a lot of this, I think, would break up gameplay. The Sinnoh decks, in my opinion, has never been one of the strong points of the Sinnoh games. The decks, as I've gotten older, has kind of become a little stale. A lot of people tend to pick the exact same Pokemon every time they play, keep the exact same roster, and it it diminishes the overall quality of the region, and I think that's something that Legends Arceus could really do a lot to address. If you were to introduce Pokemon that did not already exist, you could spice things up overall for the player, and this could also give Legends Arceus a bit of differentiation from the remakes. The remakes are going to be straight. We're going to we're going to pretty much know every single Pokemon that's there. We're going to know the Pokemon that gym leaders use, that team leaders use, that grunts use, that trainers use. You're going to be able to pick out Pokemon based on the routes and everything. It's going to be the same as Diamond, Pearl, and Platinum. With Legend Arceus, you're going to have a chance to change some things. You're going to have a chance to throw a curveball to players, and I think it would do a lot for the overall experience. The routes and different areas of Sinnoh are going to be very different. As we've already seen from screenshots and gameplay footage, we know that they are not sticking with where things typically look. We're going to see different environments. We might see the same essential areas. We might see the cavernous areas where they are, mountainous areas where they are, lakes in different locations, which is a video that we're going to be doing in the future as well. But as a whole, we're going to see that same temperate climate. Introducing and switching up where we see Pokemon could do a lot to change things. As we saw from the original trailer, we're going to be creating the first Pokedex. And with that comes what could be a study of some of the ways that Pokemon go about living their lives. This is something that Game Freak could take a page from Bandai Namco and what they did with new Pokemon Snap, which in that a lot of that game is studying the movements and the way these Pokemon interact with each other and with the world around them you could have that incorporated into the Pokedex. And it would be really cool if in this game we had Pokemon that we had to learn all about for the first time in the Sinnoh region. We know about our Bidoofs and our Starlies. We know about our Gastrodons and our Tangrowths and our Krogunks. We know about the Frostlasses, all those Pokemon. But what if we saw new Pokemon, as I've been mentioning in this entire video? It would also do a ton to change up the variation of the region, because in typical Pokemon games, you've got a certain roster of Pokemon that kind of appear in every region. You're going to see Bidoofs and Bee Barrels in like three-fourths of the routes in the Sinnoh region. I don't necessarily think that we want to see Bidoofs and Bee Barrels dotting the landscape of this open world Sinnoh. There's got to be some more variation, and introducing new Pokemon that still kind of fit into that same niche could do a lot to add to that. Maybe on the eastern side of the Sinnoh region you have Bidoofs and Bee Barrels, and on the western side you have Zigzagoons and Linoons. A Pokemon that still fits in that same niche as kind of like your rodent Pokemon, but it's just making things a little bit more different. The other thing that we're going to have to see is evolutions that didn't exist previously. There's Pokemon and there's typings. We had the fairy type introduced since Gen 4 that's going to have to be reintroduced with Legends Arceus and Pokemon typings are going to change. Pokemon evolution patterns are going to change as well. You're going to have, uh, for example, Ponyta is a Pokemon that you could find in the Sinnoh region. In Galar, you had, Sinnoh, uh, you had Galarian forms of Ponyta and Rapidash. Will you be able to find those Pokemon? Will they have anything to do with the region itself? These are questions that are going to be addressed in these games, and I'm going to be really interested to see how they approach answering them. Now, the last thing that I want to touch on in this video before we come to a close today is a spoiler warning topic. Now, there was a set of leaks that came out alongside the original reveal and leaks of Pokemon Legends Arceus and Pokemon Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl. Now, if you have not seen these, or if you do not want to be spoiled for what was in these leaks, you can end the video right now. Of course, drop a like and let me know in the comments what you thought of it up to this point. But we're going to be discussing some leaks. I'm not going to show any uh, screenshots or anything of them, just so we can avoid any issues with Nintendo or with Game Freak, because sometimes that does tend to crop up. But these leaks showed, and this is your warning, these leaks showed the player character riding on a Pokemon. The Pokemon was silhouetted or darkened in a way that we couldn't necessarily make out what it was. 
It was a Pokemon that stood on four legs. It was almost a deer-like Pokemon. It had long antlers and long horns, and it looked as if you had the ability to ride on this Pokemon through the overworld. Now, this gives us two different little bits of information. The first, of course, is that we're going to be able to ride on Pokemon and use them to navigate the landscape if the sleek is credible, which it, it most likely is. That's a big thing. That's something that we saw in recent games, but... The fact that this is an open world makes that entire feature that much more interesting and that much more important. The second thing that we learned is that this Pokemon doesn't look like any Pokemon we've seen up to this point. It didn't look like a Sawsbuck or a Deerling or a Stantler. It didn't look like a Xerneas, which is another deer Pokemon, even though I highly doubt that would be the case anyway. It was a Pokemon that seemed very new. The, the, the antlers were incredibly ornamental. They looked very fancy, almost. And it's something that we haven't really seen on any other Pokemon. So what does this tell us? I don't really have a good answer to that. It could be that the way the video, the way the screenshot is with the way the Pokemon is kind of shadowed. It could be that this is a Pokemon we know of and we just, it's, it's it positioned in a way that is strange to the camera and that we're not sure what it is. But it also really doesn't look like any Pokemon we've seen up to this point. If you look on social media or if you look on Reddit, the images are out there. Do your own digging. You can take a look, judge for yourself. But it lends credence to the fact that the roster of Pokemon in the Sinnoh region at the time of Legends Arceus is most likely going to be different than what it is in present day. We're going to have a ton of a ton more Pokemon. We could have old returning favorites. We could have new ones. It's an open question at this point. With that being said, what do you guys think? Do you think we're going to see new Pokemon in Legends Arceus, or at least new Pokemon that come from other regions that we already have in the Pokedex and the National Dex? Or do you think it's just going to be the same Sinnoh roster and it's just the starters that we're getting brand new? I would love to know what you guys think. And if you enjoyed the video, please be sure to leave a like. It, sh it shows me that you guys liked this video and it is great for you guys supporting the channel, which allows me to make more content. With that being said, I have been Linky and we'll see you all in the next Pokemon Legends Arceus discussion video. Peace out.